Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a simple notepad app in Unity and welcome to episode 4. So in this tutorial we're going to take a look at our layout of the actual app, so a bit of background in there. We'll do some more C Sharp coding and we'll also add in a quick sound effect just so as there is a bit more depth to the app. And don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial in this series. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So. For a background, the best way we can actually do this is dealing with something called the Asset Store. Now the Asset Store is a fantastic place where you can find lots of resources and all kinds of different things. And I have to say that overall, there is an insane amount of things that you can actually get from that Asset Store. And you can actually get to it by holding Control and pressing 9. And you will be presented here with the Asset Store. Now, currently, as of recording this video, there are two different versions of the Asset Store. The first one looks like this, but you can shop on the old store by clicking right here and going shop on old store. So it's up to you whichever one you want to do. I'll show you how to do both. But either way, we're going to deal with something called Skybox. And the one I'm using is called Farland Skies. So I'm going to type Farland Skies. There we are. Farland Skies. So we can use one of these if you want to. So I'll go with, uh, let's say this one for now. And we can go down and preview and we can just import or whatever. And it's basically just a free version. Uh, if to do it on the old store, you would just go on shop on old store. And generally you could do something else. Let's start searching for sky box. You don't necessarily have to use a sky box, by the way, guys. I'm just doing it because it just makes things a bit prettier. Uh, click on free only because everything we do is free and if we scroll down we can see there we are same one and you just need to click import or download and it will bring it into your project and I already have done right here make things easier and quicker and we can see here we have skyboxes quite a few so it's see which one you want to deal with uh, if we go to window and go to rendering and then go to light settings right here we can actually set a skybox material up here so let's click on the little radial button there and it will present this right here and we can choose one of those that we've just imported so let's go for evening uh okay so yeah that looks okay so let's try i don't know sunset maybe midnight i guess midday daybreak you can literally pick any you want. So again, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to go with Midnight for now. And you can see already in the scene view what it's done. It's applied it right there. So if I press play, we're not going to see too much here. That's because of our camera. So if I go to main camera and we need to go on culling mask and set nothing and clear flags skybox. So now when we press play, this is what it will look like. So we can see we have that little background right there, looks fairly decent and it should do the trick. So you can have any kind of background you want. This is just something I've quickly thought, mm, yep, yeah, that looks fine. And we can see down here in our camera preview, this is what our phone would look like, obviously without the UI elements on top. So this is what the background would look like. So next let's deal with some sound effects. So we're going to create a new folder down here in our assets. Right click, create folder, audio. Now there's not going to be too much audio within this uh, app, so I'm not going to create any subfolders. Uh, I'm going to drag and drop this clear text audio file, and you can get this on the website. Head over there, downloads and assets, uh, notepad app, and tutorial number four, and you can download it for free. So to get this working, what we'll need to do is on main camera, right click, create empty right there. So it adds an extra game object under it. This is known as parent and childing. So game object that we've just created is the child object. Main camera is the parent object. So these two are now linked together. So if main camera moves around, game object will also move around. So I'm going to right click, rename and call this one clear text audio. And then I'm going to drag and drop, make sure we are selected on clear text audio. I'm going to drag and drop this clear text audio file over here in the inspector panel. And it will add this component called audio source. 
So basically, all we really need to do is untick Play on Awake. What that means is that when it's ticked, it will play the sound as soon as the game starts. Obviously, something like Loop would continually play the sound constantly. And we only want it to play once when we say so. So we need to make sure everything is unticked. You could play around with the pitch, volume, I guess it's up to you. But for basic reasons, we just need it to be the simple sound that it is. So how do we get this working with our clear button? Well, if you remember, the clear button itself, this one right here, has the app controls attached to it, which if we click, it highlights yellow. And if we click that, we can see it's known as button control. So let's go to that script that we've written called button control. We're going to edit this now. So as we have the ability to actually add more detail into the script. So once you've written a script, it's quite easy to modify and add more to that script. So when it's loaded in Visual Studio, we'll be presented with what we created last time. So what we need to do is add in that extra variable. And remember the type, this one was game object. The type of this one we're going to create now is audio source. So we need to go public audio source and we'll call it clear sound semicolon. So this only is going to occur when we press the clear button. So at the same time we clear it here, we need to put in clear sound dot play, open close bracket, semicolon and save. It's as simple as that. It's just two extra lines of code to get that audio file play at the same time as clearing the text. So if we head back into Unity and allow the script to compile, we can see down here on the right, a little wheel, there we go. And now on app controls, on the button control component, we have that clear sound non-audio source. That means we drag and drop the file that we created up here. Remember, clear text audio, this is the variable and that goes over here, like so. And now if we press play, we can edit whatever we want in the app. So we can type all that and we'll clear and we'll also have that audio file play at the same time. There we go. So it's up to you if you want to use that same audio file. It's just a little something uh, I got and just added in there, but you can use any audio file. You don't have to use an audio file if you want. It's your app at the end of the day. You can create it in whatever way you see fit. So if I stop that now, and I'm going to import this close texture. Again, you can get this on the website. So although I don't want it in the scripts folder, I'm actually going to drop it in the textures folder right here. Perfect. And much like with the yellow button, if it imports as a texture, all you need to do is just make sure you change the texture type up here to Sprite 2D and UI, and then click on apply. So as you probably guessed, this is going to be our close button. And much in the same way we've dealt with clear, we're just gonna put this in place ready for our next tutorial. So all we need to do is game object, UI, and go down to button. And let's place this button at the top right. So we'll anchor it at the top right. So anchoring top right, zero out the position. And let's arrange it so it actually fits quite nicely. I may shrink uh, the Jimmy's notepad. So shrink that a little bit, recenter and the button. I'm going to do the rec tool and just increase the size and make it a little bit more square. So probably about that. And let's place it there. And now, again, you've probably guessed already, we just need to add this to the button itself. So drag and drop close onto button and it becomes the actual X. And I'm going to go on text, but I'm not going to remove the text. I'm not going to delete it. I'm just going to remove any words in it, just in case we need to do something else with it at a later date. So finally, let's uh, right click and rename and we'll call this close button. Perfect. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to have the functionality of all this working. So we're going to take a look at getting this working 
the X button. So we're going to have it say, I don't know, uh, are you sure you want to exit? Uh, something is unsaved. We should probably also have a little note down here saying, um, I don't know, save or, um, in fact, you know what? We'll do that now before we leave. Uh, so I'm going to take the original button that we had here and I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate, much like we did with that one. And I'm going to anchor it on the bottom left and just move it across to there. And let's change the text on it to say save. And I think I'm actually going to change the color of the button itself. So what I'm going to do is go on color right here and change it to green. There we go. So now we can see we've got clear and save. So like I say, next tutorial, we're going to get the functionality of all these buttons working, uh, probably deal with some more um, like sound effects because the X, I want to have like a warning sound if you want to close and not saved. So there's going to be more coding involved with that. So what I would recommend now, guys, is you get your layout how you want it. Like I said, this is a pretty simple app, but it's a real great introduction to app development. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.